parent should never, ever have to wonder, is my child safe at school? The Como investigators have uncovered a shocking failure by one local school district allowing sexually aggressive students to repeatedly target the most vulnerable kids. The investigator Tracy Vetter joins us with these very disturbing details. Tracy? Well, Molly and Eric, you know, repeated doesn't mean once or twice. Instead, what we're talking about is exposing a pattern of failure by the Clover Park School District. It's led to children with special needs being beaten up, molested, raped on campus by known predatory students. The most recent attack just last May happened inside Lakes High School. School surveillance video obtained by the Como investigators takes you along step by step. The target, the petite teen wearing a backpack, a special needs student who we'll call Jane. She, she's wonderful. She's, uh, you know, she's a people person. She loves to be around people. I am? You are. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy loves you. Watch as Jane follows a bigger boy, another special needs student, across a common area. He leads her down a set of stairs into a hallway checking for open doors. No luck, so back up the stairs he leads Jane into an unlocked teacher's lounge and then into the men's bathroom. Six minutes pass before a teacher walks in. Police reports say the teacher heard a high-pitched voice from the closed stall that sounded like a child. The teacher's entry sends the boy rushing from the bathroom, no longer wearing his jacket, hitching up his pants, running into a common area. Jane has limited verbal skills and can't or won't talk about what happened. She's totally changed and she won't talk about it. So we'll probably never know what exactly happened. Jane comes out two minutes later, hand to her face. In the police report, she has bruising on her neck, hemorrhaging on her cheek, indicative of strangulation. When I saw that, it was heartbreaking. She also has a missing tooth, which is later found bloody in the same bathroom trash bin. And she was fighting basically for her life. According to several police reports, Jane is not this student's first victim. In 2015, that boy was accused of nearly the same thing with another special needs student, also at Lakes High School. And then in 2011, a woman told teachers that she saw him fondling a three-year-old girl at a different Clover Park school. At some time, the district ordered that the boy be under constant one-on-one -on -one supervision. But the morning of Jane's assault, no one told the substitute bus driver about the restriction. Well, that floors me. It was just horrible. I mean, I was, very, I said, something needs to happen now. If there's a plan put in place, the plan failed. And this is not the first time Clover Park failed repeatedly to corral a predatory student. At Hutloff Middle School in 2011, a sexually aggressive special education student assaulted another student in the boys' bathroom. The allegations are outlined in a civil suit. What happened to my son is he was raped. Como News reported the assault and the fact that Clover Park had transferred the student to Hutloff after allegedly raping a girl with special needs at another of its middle schools. Accused of negligence in those two civil cases, Clover Park District paid victims more than a million dollars. When that predatory student transferred from Clover Park to Bethel School District, was Bethel warned of his sexually aggressive behavior? Attorney Lauren Cochran says no. These are the most vulnerable kids that are on the campus. Now at Bethel High, that boy met Cheyenne. Are you okay to talk about this, Cheyenne, or do you want to wait a little while? Tell me about this. 14 at the time, she has the mentality of a five-year-old. It's hard. It's really hard. Cheyenne's parents had no idea what was happening. John and Leanne, were not using their last names, witnessed their sweet daughter's behavior changing for the worse. Yeah, see all the scars? Those are bite marks. Yeah. They say Cheyenne started injuring herself, acting out sexually. Bethel School District's incident report says Cheyenne and the boy were found in a locked portable toilet near the bleachers. No parents or police were contacted. Only later did her parents discover this wasn't the first incident between them. Well, do you still remember what happened? Yeah. In the bathroom? Right. I went in the bathroom. He touched me. Knowing that McKay was violated, so we can't take back. It just made me so angry.
Cochran represents both Cheyenne and Jane, calling them victims of different predatory students and a school district that repeatedly failed to protect them. Three times with the same individual being shuttled from school to school, you, you know, it, it, it borders on criminal. I'm with uh, Como TV and I'd like to speak with Superintendent LeBeau. We asked Clover Park for an interview several times, finally showing up in person. I think it's in the best interest of the, the district to do, have some kind of response um, for the parents for certain. But the answer once again, no comment. The long term effects on a child who goes through this uh, are enormous. I'm just going to start it here. We asked former state school superintendent Judith Billings to look at what we've uncovered. She comes out. She, she says she's never seen a situation as severe as at Clover Park and believes the district has a systemic problem. What I don't understand in this case is why they would let this happen again and again and again. For the families involved, there is no answer for what their children have lost. If I'm not with my child, then, and they're at school, it's their job to protect my child like I would. Filed claims for both, Attorney Lauren Cochran today filed claims for both girls against the Clover Park School District. Former Superintendent Billings believes it's time for the Office of Public Instruction to step in, assess this district, and come up with a corrective action plan so more of these vulnerable students don't become victims. Tracy Vetter, Como Investigators.